Hello, good day everyone. So here's teacher PC to talk about literary pieces under the subject society and literature. So first we're going to talk about The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Now let's have Toni Morrison first. Okay, so The Bluest Eye is Toni Morrison's first novel. So Toni Morrison has the real name of Chloe Anthony Wofford Morrison. She's an American novelist who was not who was noted for her examination of black experience, particularly black female experience within the black community. She's a black American. Her writings are inspired from her perceptions of how it is to be a black American woman. So let's have the literary piece itself. So the setting is in Lorraine, Ohio, the hometown of Toni Morrison. Okay, so that's trivia. And then, the characters. We have the first one, Claudia McTeer. Uh, she's the narrator of parts of the novel. She's an independent and strong-minded nine-year-old. A rebel against the adults' uh, tyranny over children and against the black community's idealization of white beauty standards. We have another one, Trolley Breed Love. The Carlos father who suffered early humiliations, taking out his frustration on the women in his life. As the story unfolds, rage increasingly dominates. And we have another one, Pauline, Polly, with love. The Carlos mother who believes that she is ugly. Okay, a black woman. This belief has made her lonely and cold. She is a deformed foot and sees herself as a martyr of a terrible marriage. Marriage. She finds meaning not in her own family, but in romantic movies and in her work caring for a well-to-do white family. Now, we have Frida Maktir, Claudia's 10-year-old sister, who shares Claudia's independence and stubbornness. Because she is closer to adolescence, Frida is more vulnerable to her community's equation of whiteness with beauty. Freja is more knowledgeable about the world and sometimes braver than Claudia. Mrs. McTeer, Claudia's mother, an authoritarian and sometimes uh, callous woman who nonetheless steadfastly loves and protects her children. So let's talk about the parts of the plot since this is a novel, a fiction. Okay. Introduction. A young girl named Piccola believes that whiteness is beautiful and that she is ugly because she is black. She has lived a difficult life. Her father drinks. Her mother is distant. Sami, her brother, frequently runs away. Now, what's the conflict? What's the problem? Piccola's parents have both had difficult lives too. Pauline, her mother, has a lame foot and has always felt isolated. She loses herself in movies, which reaffirm her belief that he is ugly and that romantic love is reserved for the beautiful. She encourages her husband's violent behavior in order to reinforce her own goal as a martyr. She feels most alive when she is at work cleaning a white woman's home. So instead of cleaning their own home. Piccolo's father was abandoned by his parents and raised by his great aunt, who died when he was a young teenager. He was humiliated by two white men who found him having sex for the first time and made him continue while they watched. He ran away to find his father but was rebuffed by him. By the time he met Pauline, he was a wild and ruthless man. He feels trapped in his marriage and has lost interest in life. Now, what's the climax, the, the highest point in the story? Charlie returns home early and finds her washing dishes. With mixed motives of tenderness and hatred that are fueled by guilt, he rapes her. Piccola, Piccola. When Piccola's mother finds her unconsciousness on the floor, she disbelieves Piccola's story and beats her. Piccolo goes to stupid church, a shamistic, and asks him for blue eyes. Instead of helping her, he uses her to kill a dog he dislikes. So, how is the falling action the counterpart of the problem? How is it being solved? Claudia and Freja find out that 
Piccola has been impregnated by her father and unlike the rest of the neighborhood, they want the baby to live. They sacrifice the money they have been saving for a bicycle and plant marigold seeds. They believe that if the flowers leave, so will Piccola's baby. But how did it really end? So let's have the conclusion. The flowers refuse to bloom and Piccola's baby dies when it is born prematurely. Sad to say. Charlie hurries Piccola a second time and then runs away, dies in a workhouse. Piccola goes mad believing that her cherished wish has been fulfilled and that she has the bluest eyes. With the reference sparknotes.com. So just take note of the following parts. Thank you. God bless everyone.